demonstrate how to tink short rows. And if that sounds like Greek to you, let me break it down. Tinking is, tink is the word knit backwards, and it's a term we use when we unravel our knitting one stitch at a time, rather than just ripping out your needles and you know ripping out the work. Doing one stitch at a time is a careful way to undo the knitting to fix something that's hopefully not too far back in your, in your work. There's a dog here trying to get my microphone cord. It's been quite a challenging day for a video shoot <laughs> with the dogs. Anyway, so tinking and undoing your work. Okay, short rows. Short rows are uh, instructions we have on our pattern where we're not knitting all the way across the row or we're not knitting all the way around. We're going back and forth in, um, in little rows, short rows, to create some shaping in the work. And the socks do this a lot. A lot of sweaters do this. Um, sweater shaping can be up here on uh, the upper back to create a little more ease back there and have the collar stand up nicely on the back of the neck. So short rows are called for for a lot of different things in knitting, and I'm going to demonstrate how to unknit the, probably the two most popular kinds of short rows, traditional wraps and turns and German short rows. Before we go any further, I know people are going to ask, what about in the round? Because I'm going to demonstrate on a flat sample. It, the technique is, is exactly the same, because even if you're knitting in a tube on circular needles, when you're knitting short rows, you're knitting flat, right? You're not knitting in a tube anymore. You're knitting one side of the work, turning the work, knitting on the wrong side, turning the work, knitting on the right side. So you're essentially knitting a flat piece, so it's, it's no different. What I'm going to demonstrate here will be the same for both. So all that talking is actually more work than <laughs> taking the short rows. Let's take a look. Okay, here we are in the piece, and we're going to pretend that I've just made a mistake and I need to tink out these short rows. And I'm going to start tinking on a knit row, and the first um, short row that I'm going to run into, the first short row technique, is a German short row technique. So regular tinking is just to put my needle into the V of the stitch below, give it a little tug, It's all going along very nicely. And, oh, no, my first one, I'm sorry, is a wrap and turn. <laughs> I didn't see that there. Uh, so all of a sudden, my yarn doesn't seem to be coming from the right place. Everything's looking really different. And that's because um, I've run into one of the short rows. And the reason I want to show it to you this way is so that you don't have to count, so you can tell what's happening. So my yarn should be coming from the, the, the stitch itself, but when I pull, it's tightening this stitch over here, not this one. That's obviously a short row. To get out of a traditional wrap and turn, I'm going to slip that stitch over the left needle, untangle that working yarn from around that stitch, and I'm ready to go. And my working yarn's attached over here, which means that was a short row. So I'll turn the work to start tinking this way on the purl side to get to the next wrap and turn. So again, I put my needle into the V of the stitch below, and I have a marker here separating half the stitches. If I wanted to count, that would make it easy. And then boom, everything's different again. When I pull the yarn, it's coming from over here, not this stitch on the needle. And then I take a look, and sure enough, that yarn is running behind the stitch, not through it. So I'll slip that stitch to the left needle, untangle the yarn from around that stitch. The working yarn is coming from the stitch on the left needle. I've finished that short row. We can turn the work and I will take a look at what it looks like when I hit a German short row. So to start tinking again, These are just regular old knit stitches. And I come to something that looks quite different, and that's because I had the double stitch. And this one's actually easier to see than a wrap and turn. I can point it out right away on this side. Um, you can see the yarn's coming from a weird place. Nothing looks right. It's uh, Everything's kind of, well, it's just different. 
I'm going to slip that stitch over the left needle, pull the yarn in back, and gosh, no, we're ready to go. That was the end of that short row. Turn the work. Let's see it on the purl side. You can see there's less detangling with German short rows. It all starts to resolve itself a little faster than a traditional wrap and turn. Okay, I don't need this stitch marker. It's too big for these needles, really. Tinking along, and then sure enough, everything starts to look weird. Have that double stitch. Soon as I release a little bit, you see the yarn just came right out. And when I finish, I want to have the yarn coming from a real stitch on the needle. This stitch has been restored. With German short rows, that stitch is a little bit pulled loose from its neighbors, and that's because we had to tug on it to get the German short row. But that is how to tink out short rows. Be sure when you're doing this that you're keeping track of where you're tinking so that when you re-knit it, um, where you are in the pattern and how many you've undone, that can be pretty confusing. <laughs> so be sure to keep good track of, of where you are when you're um, unknitting those. And that's it. I hope that helps. Good luck.